The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. We're here at Farm Smart here in Guelph, and we're joined by Horace Bonner, um, OMAF soybean specialist. And Horace, you just finished up a presentation on the key components to higher yield. And uh, let's run through some of the top uh, uh, components on your list, uh, starting with variety. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's key that we make the point right away as we're talking about how to get the highest possible yield that we're talking here about things that we can manage, right? The weather, soil type, organic matter, all those things are far more important than some of the things we're able to manage. But certainly in terms of the things that we can do as producers, variety is at the top of the list. And there's a number of reasons for that. Of course, it's disease resistance. It's, in some cases, insect resistance. But the biggest thing is there is a tremendous breeding effort going on in North America, but also right here in Ontario. And if you look at varieties that we grow today, in some cases as much as 30 bushels more than those that were grown 30 years ago. So that's, that's quite a difference, right? And we do have varieties today that can take us to well over 60 bushels. If you look at the performance trials, there is a tremendous variation in there. And in most of the tables, between the top and the bottom variety, it ranges from as little as five to as much as 10 bushels, right? So that is absolutely critical for the average producer to choose a high yielding variety that is also well suited to the specific issues of that field. So you're gonna to have to work with your seed company and agronomists to try and figure out that. Now planting date is so important as well. And you yes. talk about being as early as possible, but Going back to your previous conversation uh, point, variety is also important when you're talking plant, planting dates. Yes, that's right. So when we did planting date studies originally, we just tried it with a bunch of different varieties, and the results were kind of mixed, right? And depending on the year, generally speaking, there was more yield with earlier planting to a point, of course, where it's too early. But it's surprising, a lot of years in the dates that we chose, we actually couldn't go too early. As early as April 15th, those beans yielded more than May 15th or certainly the end of May. Now on average, still we would feel that, you know, the earliest you want to start in the southwest is about the 20th of April. And right here where, where we are today in Guelph, probably in terms of average, the 5th, to the 10th would be kind of the ideal planting date. But the thing that we really um, uh, think is helpful in terms of this planting date decision, if you're going to go what I'm gonna call super early, you absolutely have to marry that with a longer season bean. And the reason for that is if you choose uh, an adapted or even a short day bean and you plant it very early, it can finish too fast in the fall and you miss out on some of the potential rains in late August and September. So we've actually had in some cases reductions in yield by planting early with a short day bean. Uh, so you put the two concepts together early planting, whatever that means in your zone, right? And generally speaking, I would say that that means the last week of April, first week of May across Ontario, along with uh, long season bean, will provide four bushels more, right? Mm -hmm. Those two concepts together. And four bushels is nothing to sneeze at when it comes to soybeans. Um, number three on your list was crop rotation. And the need for a full rotation and to get wheat into that rotation. Yeah, yeah, so the key there is to remember that soybeans are pretty hard on the ground in terms of both nutrient uptake, huge nutrient uptake, right? 40 pounds of P and 70 of K removed every time you grow a good soybean crop. That's a lot of nutrients. But not only that, they do very little to sustain soil structure or organic matter. So if you grow a lot of beans in the rotation, your soil health will decline, no question. 
Then on top of that, you've got issues like soybean cyst and other root problems, say pythium, rhizoctonia, whatever, that build up if you grow too many beans. So, the long and short of it, there is no other thing that you can do outside of crop rotation that really addresses those problems as well as crop rotation. So what I'm saying is we've known for a hundred years that crop rotation is key and you know what? It still is. It absolutely is and the point here in terms of your wheat, you're, you're absolutely right, is a two-year crop rotation enough? Corn, beans, corn, beans? And the answer is no. You need three. Right. But Dave Hooker's work at Ridgetown suggests adding that wheat will give you five bushels. Yeah, on average that is correct. And we would say from uh, not our data set but from other North American work that actually you should really, if you want 100% yield potential for soybeans, you should only grow them one out of four years, believe it or not. So that is, uh, you know, not even achievable for a lot of us in terms of, well, what else do you grow, right? I mean, it's easy to say that, but what else are we supposed to grow? So one out of three is already not the best, right? Uh, so one out of two, uh, one out of one, that's bad news. In other words, growing beans all the time, you're yeah. asking for trouble, right? And you got a lot of things on your list. I'm going to ask, we're going to talk about one more, and that's sure. tillage, you had, which you had down as, you know, two bushels. Yeah, so the, the, the thing about tillage is that from a soybean perspective, most of the soybean roots are in the top two, well, three inches. About almost 80% of soybean roots are in the top three inches. And so if your soil is healthy on the top, now of course compaction is a problem. If you've compacted the soil, that's different. But one of the reasons no-till works so well is because most of the roots are in the top zone. And if you do too much tillage, you, you can actually dry things out and hurt yourself, right? So at the end of the day, what I believe is the trial data. And there has been a lot of work done on this, both here at the university, we at OMAF, and right across North America. And the average response is two bushels to any form of tillage you do. Now sometimes it's up to four. We've had up to eight, but that is the exception. And you can actually be better in no-till sometimes, right? If it turns really dry in, in, in later in the growing season. So at the end of the day, all I'm really saying is that tillage is not the thing that's going to bring you five or ten bushels. Just isn't going to do it on average for most of us. Thank you.